The Holy Spirit gives you a king in this life so that you can increase credibility. You can develop trustworthiness with God. Even though the Lord is all knowing, he gives you the platform to make decisions and you could choose whether um, you manifest good or evil. And you could choose what you become. You could choose how you serve. But when you serve the king that is in the book of heaven, for you to serve while you're living on earth. There are all type of incentives and benefits that come with serving the king. The man of God is God living his life as a man. So the man form makes it accessible for you to do things and deeds exactly unto God. You know, um, every time Joshua assisted Moses, he was assisting God. So that's why God was able to take him into being the king nextly and leading the children of Israel into all of their victories and all of their blessings. But as you notice, God used Joshua to fix every defeat that the children of Israel was having and bring them into the land flowing with milk and honey. So the transference happened because of the successful servanthood to the king. When your king comes into your life, you have an opportunity now to do things exactly to God. You get a chance to talk to God exactly. You get a chance to serve God exactly. You get a chance to treat God exactly. And so like it's a face-to-face -face encounter. The Bible says something amazing in Proverbs chapter 20. It says that the, the fear of a king is as the roaring of a lion. And whosoever provokes him to anger sinneth against his own soul. In Proverbs chapter 20, verse 22, it's saying that if the king gets provoked around you, you're sinning against your own soul. So imagine we often reference sin as you disobeying God, you're disobeying God. There's an aspect of sin that when God comes to you in the form of a man, if they get irritated around you, you know that you're sinning against God. If they get upset with you, you know you're sinning against God. So it's an easy, it's an easy signal, it's an easy outlet, it's an easy form of communication for you to understand how to gain credibility with God and trustworthiness and favor with God because you can look at it with the king he gives you. Oftentimes, the familiar spirits are responsible for the breach between you and your man of God. Familiar spirits will follow you even when your man of God comes into your life. And familiar spirits, they come to create a breach in your servanthood, even if they got to connect you to another man of God. As long as it's not God's will, they want to do it. Let me give you an example. Okay, so there's a lot of women of God on earth right now. Or let me not say a lot of women of God. There are women of God on earth right now, and there's men of God on earth right now. But just because there are men of God or women of God, they can't get together and say, well, this is my wife or this is my husband, because they may not be equally yoked according to the level of understanding they have and knowledge they have. And yes, the other one could train the other one, but if that one has a struggle with that level of meat, that level of doctrine, they won't be open to receive it because they don't know that realm. The same way, remember when Peter, when he started preaching to the Gentiles, everybody else would have thought that Peter was doing error. He was doing witchcraft because they had only knew that the gospel was for them, Israelites. But here now the gospel is being poured out, the spirit being poured out on Gentiles. And to see Peter doing that, it will look demonic. Now, this is why Peter began to shy back. And Apostle Paul rebuked him and said, stop being ashamed that this is the will of God. Be bold about it and don't switch up when you get around them and act like you don't like the Gentiles. Keep it authentic 100 all the time, even when you get around them, even though they don't understand. Let them see you being fortified 
in this level of meat and doctrine that God has given you. So the same way familiar spirits, if they want to stop you from serving the exact king, they'll even pitch you with another king because they know that you're not going to get rewarded in heaven for that. God not going to bless you if Elijah is supposed to anoint you and you're serving Jeremiah because Jeremiah doesn't have an anointing for you. So that's oftentimes what familiar spirits do. They have to trickle over into the religious format because the obvious format, like if they start saying, you know, listen to this person, they're a secular singer. Like you can look and say, well, this is demonic because I know that this person don't believe in God. So it's obvious. So familiar spirits, they can't use devices um, that are obviously the world. They have to use devices that are in religious format, in traditional format. So familiar spirits are responsible for a lot of the deception that keep people from serving their king. Your man of God, when they come to you, it'll be obvious because they will stir your soul in a way that nobody has stirred your soul. When you, when you encounter your king on earth, their words will be so tangible. Your body will be able to feel it. Your blood will be able to feel it. Your bones will be able to feel it. Your inward parts will be able to feel it. And most, most, uh, most uh, apparent will be your belly will leap. Remember what happened with Elizabeth when um, she encountered Mary, her belly leaped. Because John was in there meeting Jesus through Mary. Mary was carrying the assignment to birth Jesus. Elizabeth, the, the assignment to birth John. And when Elizabeth meets Mary, it's John meeting Jesus. It's Elijah meeting Jesus. So the belly leaps because this is the divine connector. Divine connection, divine connector. So... When you meet your king, your belly will leap. That's how you know this is my king because they'll say things that you have had questions about. They'll answer you in their teachings. They'll answer you in their doctrine. They will spontaneously talk about something that you yourself was even too shame to articulate to God in prayer. Like you won't say certain things about sex to God in prayer but they'll come to you and talk to you about sex because God is answering your heart as them. Whenever your king comes, because same way with the woman at the well, the woman at the well saw Jesus and she was shocked that Jesus was giving her answers about things. You've been with five men. The man that you're with right now is not your husband. He's answering her things about uh, situations in her life. Share me, share me, share me, share me right now. Share me on your page. Share me on your, your page right now. So there are obvious signs when you meet your king, your man of God. What you do with those signs could catapult you into being a carrier of the double portion of his spirit, or it could guide you into being a fool. It could guide you into being wise. It could guide you into being in sin. But when they show up in your life, there is all type of graces to set you free from each and every yoke. So if you reject them, you have to be a protector of the yoke. And when you protect the yoke, that means that you have to continue going further and further in sin. That's the other side of it. If God sends the prophet of God to you, the king to you, and you reject the king, whatever you were doing before has to be amplified. Because remember, either you humble yourself, receive more grace, or you operate in pride and then receive more yokes. And remember the familiar spirits that follow everybody's life does not want you to be free from them. They want you to continue down the path of bondage. So when you look in the word of God, 
there is a grace on uh, Hosea. But Gomer is not receiving the grace. So even though she gets impregnated, she does, but she keeps going back in the streets. So even though there is the grace on Hosea, it's a prophetic grace for Goma. Goma keeps going back into the world because the world is Gomer's love. So remember when your king come to you, there's a lot of worldly things inside of you that you don't identify because you may read the Bible. You may have gone to a place called church. You may have served in a place called ministry. You may have sung. You may have taught Bible sessions. You know, my encounter in life, uh, I've been in ministry for over decades now. But what I have noticed is that there's many people that you meet that they have a biblical history according to them, but they don't know nothing. They're dead in their soul. You got to teach them stuff. I've never met somebody that told me that they taught the word that I didn't have to teach them. I never met somebody that told me that they sung in a choir that I didn't have to teach them. And when I say teach them, I don't mean like the deep things of God, I mean elementary things. I mean, like things that you should know if you was at that level of servanthood. Are, are you catching me? I'm not talking about just teach them like the deep and the revelatory things of God. I'm saying like teach you things that you should have known if you were serving in that arena legally, meaning you were set out by God. Saints, when Jesus sent them out two by two, when he sent them to cast out devils, he didn't cast them, sent them to cast out devils because they wasn't trained. He trained them first, then he sent them out. So they knew how to cast out the devils because of the knowledge that they had about devils. So Jesus didn't send them out and then come to them and say, uh, you know, I need to rebuke you because I need to teach you about this. You need to learn about this. You need to. No, no, no. They had already knew. That's why they was able to go out. All right. You notice the only thing that he rebuked them about, well, he said, Satan fell from heaven like lightning. And then Jesus said, don't rejoice that you have authority over the spirits. That's the only reason why he rebuked them. He said, rejoice because your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. So what was Jesus saying? I'm only rebuking you because I want you to get a revelation of the book of life that I put your name in there. That's why you got authority. That's the only reason why he rebuked them. He wasn't rebuking them about their personality. He wasn't rebuking them about their hygiene. He wasn't rebuking them about their attitude. He wasn't rebuking them about their, um, their um, lack of sensitivity to the spirit. He was rebuking them about not seeing that their name was written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, that they was on their way to heaven, that this where the authority was trickling down from, that their name had achieved eternal life. Now, saints, Oftentimes you meet people, they'll tell you that they preach, they teach, they sung, they did this, they did this, but they don't know nothing. So that means that they was a trespasser against God. Familiar spirits don't mind if you sing in a choir as long as it's grieving the Holy Ghost. Are you catching this? Familiar spirits don't mind if you hold conferences as long as it's grieving the Holy Ghost. Do you know that you will be holding a deliverance conference? And familiar spirits will be behind that deliverance conference simply because that's not what the Holy Spirit has scheduled. That's how familiar spirits operate. They don't mind you reading a certain chapter in the Bible as long as God don't want you reading that chapter. Did you know that there's some parts of the word that you're not supposed to read? It's not time for you to read it or God may never have you read it because it's not for you. So if God is telling you not to engage the sexual aspect of life, He's not going to have you study Songs of Solomon where it's talking about the breast and it's talking about the legs of a woman. It's talking about all these different sexual things because that will go against the word of the Lord for your life right now. There are certain parts of the Bible that people read it out of witchcraft. Saints, and then all, you, you know also those other people that always, they always got haters in their head. Everybody hate them and then they go find scriptures so that they can support that they got haters. They'll find scriptures to support 
why they should be messy and why they should confront somebody. They'll find scriptures on why to be combative and always fight. See, familiar spirits, they are okay with you doing anything, even if it looks religious, as long as it grieves God. So when your man of God comes into your life, familiar spirits are after getting you to grieve God after God has shown up to you through your man of God. So when your man of God comes into your life, the familiar spirits will want to intrigue you to be dishonorable. So what happens is when the man of God shows up, he'll teach you and train you in obvious form of what God wants from you. They'll teach you to their teaching. They'll teach you to their teaching. You'll hear them say it. You'll hear it with your physical ears because oftentimes people are not even in tune with their spirit ears. So you'll hear it with your physical ears. You'll hear them say, God doesn't like this about you. God doesn't like this about you. God loves this about you. God loves this about you. They'll tell you what God likes. Your attentiveness, your servanthood, your communication, your patience, your helpfulness, your sowing, your serving, your ambition to please, your desire to make peace, your maturity. They'll tell you your pleasure making abilities, your pleasurable here. And saints, familiar spirits, they stop the pleasure well. If you take a note, write that down. Familiar spirits stop the pleasure well. So God will give you a grace, an anointing, and he'll settle that upon you to please your king, to please your man of God. And the familiar spirits, they will pour water on that fire so that it will, it will go out. So you'll stop doing it. So let me give you an example. Um... Say a man of God comes and talks to his flock and say, I love ballerina shoes. I love ballerina shoes. And then you go get ballerina shoes. You take pictures of the ballerina shoes. You dance with the ballerina shoes. You, 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 you include the ballerina shoes in your garments. All the familiar spirits are going to do is to cause you to become weary with ballerina shoes so that the pleasure well now you wear sandal socks because the pleasure well is being targeted by the familiar spirits. So familiar spirits, they are also listeners to what your king is telling you. They know when your king tells you something. They know when your king prescribes something to you. So they will come. So if the king say, I want you to uh, drink lemon water. I'm giving you an example. I'm just giving you an example. Y'all, y'all end up saying this lemon water is making me sick. I don't like how it feels. Y'all develop a hatred for lemon water. So now the pleasure well, so when the king sees you, the king will be grieved by you. So that when the king looks at you, the king will be saddened by you. So familiar spirits are responsible for grieving the Holy Ghost with the advice that they tell you and then you heed that advice in your decision making. So then now the pleasure well that God actually imparted to you, he gave it to you for the king, you can't even give it to the king. So now the king is left hurt when it deals with you. The king ain't got to be hurt all the time. There's, there's people that uh, uh, could be raised up. There's people that are uh, replacements and stuff like that. But why let that happen? When the blessing is for you, when the inheritance is for you, when the oil is for you. So you want to take a hold of everything that is scheduled for you when your king comes into your life. You don't want it just to go to someone else. Why? Why should it go to someone else when it's yours? Why, why should a car, why should a house, why should a clothing, why should power, favor, increase, health, healing, 
Why should miracles, why should open doors, why should protection, deliverance, why should divine connections, wealth transferences, why should it go to someone else when it's for you? And so it often happens because people stop the pleasure well. Remember, pride and pleasure in God don't go together. So one have to pick one or the other. Like you can't pick pleasure in God and then keep your pride. And then you can't keep pride and pleasure God. You have to let one go. So when the king comes into your life, humbling yourself means I receive the pleasure well for you. So saints, I never got into an argument with um, the man of God that I connected with years ago. I never fought with him. I never got into a debate with him. I never questioned his doctrine. I never opposed how he thinks. I never uh, expressed that I was against him in any way, shape or form. There was never a moment where I confronted him. So that he could feel bad, so that he could feel like he was wrong. Ne never. Because the pleasure well that I received was genuine. It was pure. We never got into combat. Even if he was to sternly speak to me, I'm not going to sternly speak to him. I've never been sarcastic with him either. I've never answered him sarcastically. I've never spoken to him and raised my voice. I never yelled at him. I've never uh, got in his presence and then started talking to people around him because the sensitivity of the pleasure well. So if, if I'm invited to sit and eat with him, I'm not going to be talking to the people at the table because I don't want to do anything to affect his pleasure well. Well, how could that affect his pleasure? Well, you're just being nice. The thought to be nice can be evil. As you grow in the spirit, you'll recognize that your thoughts even to help people be witchcraft thoughts. As you grow in the spirit, you'll recognize the thoughts to be kind to a person be evil. Some, some, not all, some. Some, some of the thoughts that you have to be generous to start a conversation with somebody be an evil thought. It doesn't come from God. The thought to bless somebody, the thought to give somebody something. I got this. I, let me go give it to them. And it's not even from God. And sometimes you could give something to somebody you're not supposed to give it to them. And now you opened up favor with them and it's demonic favor. You wasn't supposed to give it to them. And when you gave it to them, that what you gave to them has the power of persuasion. So now they're persuaded to connect with you and they wasn't supposed to connect with you. But what you gave them is carrying the power of connectivity. That when they receive it from you, they want to be connected to you. When they receive it from you, they want to be uh, in friendship with you. And now you have created a demonic relationship. And then saints, when you learn about honor, Satan will have you honor wrong people. God will say, go buy body wash for your man of God. You'll start going buy body wash for another man. But God is saying, give it to them. But you're taking the training of God and now you're spending it on somebody else. Now you're doing to them the same thing that you do to your man of God. And God is looking at you like, wow. Don't mind when I prophesy. You know, I can, I can, I can see. <laughs> you know, I, but I, I'm, I'm just helping you so that because I want all of you all to be led of the spirit. I want you to be in communication with the Holy Spirit all throughout the day so that you could catch whatever is not of him and what's of him. And I want you to be able to hear his voice giving you conversations apart from this teaching, apart from the teachings I give. Because he will continue and elaborate when you are by yourself and while you're in a specific department of a thing. 
Oftentimes, what God has given you for your man of God, you'll start placing it into people around you. So now you're saying, okay, I know that I can do this because I've been taught this by God. Now I'm going to do this for this person. And God like, no, no, I don't want you to do that for this person, though. I don't want you to do that. But you're saying, no, I'm going to do that. And see, now you go into a phase where you're grieving the Holy Spirit because that's not what he wants you to do. God says, I want you to help Prophet Joshua. I want you to comment on his broadcast. I want you to boost him. I want you, and then you don't do that. And then you go find another prophet and you start doing that to him. You start talking, bow, bow, bow. You boosting him. And God, like, I don't even want him to be boosted. <laughs> I ain't even send him out. I said prophet to you. I want you to boost prophet. And then I want you to advertise prophet to people. Now you sending the other person's videos. To people in the inbox. You're sharing and saying they lied. And God saying, I taught you this for profit. By the way, since this has happened many of times, there's a wisdom being imparted to you for the king to pleasure the king. And then you'll take that same information and use it to grieve God and assault God with that same information. So saints, God taught Judas how to be a disciple, how to be loyal to Jesus, how to handle Jesus's money. But now he's handling the money of Pharisees, 30 shekels of silver. That didn't come from Jesus Avenue. It came from Pharisees. Now there's another leader giving him money. There's another leader paying him it was Jesus paying him. And Jesus put him over the money. Now he's over the money of the Pharisees. They gave him 30 shekels of silver. He's holding that money. He's stewarding that money. You notice there's a switching. But see, the pleasure well that's in Judas is for Jesus. But what makes Judas a betrayer is that he's taking the pleasure well for Jesus and he's giving it to someone else. So saints, here's the temptation when your king comes into your life. The temptation is always to get you away from the king and pitch you with another king. That's all the temptation going to be. Say, if I could be transparent with you, I often have to disconnect from people because they want me to be connected to them, um, whether it be like, I'm connected. They want me to, to, to come underneath their ministry, to be a son of their ministry, to, to be like I'm, I'm underneath them, like they are my father. Because I'm very kind, I'm very gifted, I'm very anointed. I have a lot of glory on me, in me, with me. I have wells of life that flow through me. So somebody would like to say, you know, this is my son, Prophet Joshua Holmes. People would like to do that, but I'm not their son. They are not mentoring me. I'm not learning from them. I'm not going to them to ask them the word of the Lord. I'm, I didn't come from them. They are not of my line. I came out of the line of Dr. Mike Murdoch because God placed the mantle on Dr. Mike Murdoch for wisdom in his time. But he placed that mantle on him in his time. Now he has Dr. Mike Murdoch in a stage where he wants him to enjoy his older years. So it's not needful for Dr. Mike Murdoch to, uh, you know, I can do that. I can give you a fresh word and see that. I can give you wisdom that's profound in this new generation. I'm, 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 I'm carrying a torch in this generation, a candlestick in this generation. I often have to disconnect from people because they would like to pit that, that on me. And it's not like that. You see what I'm saying? So you say, Prophet, well, why are you telling me this? What, what's the purpose? I'm telling you that when God has knitted you, knit you with a king in genealogy, that they are birthing Christ in you, 
all of your temptation will be to lead them to go to another king. Saints, by the way, if Jesus submits to John the Baptist, this is so profound. Either John the Baptist is about to die or John the Baptist will be slowed down in his ministry so Jesus can overlap. Jesus never submits to John the Baptist if John the Baptist going to be in John the Baptist's prime. If John the Baptist going to be busy, active, all over the place. Jesus only submits himself when somebody is on their way out. Or they're being slowed down. Jesus don't sit submit when you are locomotive. You on your you you up and up and up and up. It doesn't submit. And then the reason why Jesus submit is not for impartation. Jesus submits for example. So Jesus is washing the disciples' feet to show them how servanthood looks. How love looks. Not because Jesus needs an impartation from the feet that he's washing. So when Jesus served the blind men, he's not serving them because he needs an impartation from them. He's serving them to give them an example of how they should do with the grace that they have received. Become a servant. Walk in love. So you got to understand that the king in your life, the temptation will always be to get away from them. And not just get away from them and do nothing, but to find another king. Even if it's a fake king. <laughs> Even if it's a drag king. <laughs> Even... <laughs> Even if it's King Kong with titties. King Kong with titties. Huh? Even if it's King Jamama. You see Aunt Jamama, King Jamama. Even if it's as long as it grieves God. So saints, what stops servanthood in somebody's life when your king comes to you? Familiar spirits have succeeded in conversation. Familiar spirits talk to your mind. What do they arouse? Weariness. That means that you'll get tired of your king. What do they arouse? Dishonor. Means that you will rob your king of pleasure wells. Money brings pleasure to your king. Attentiveness brings pleasure to your king. Conversation brings pleasure to your king. Most women that I've met over life, I've met hundreds of women throughout my life. I haven't slept with them. I haven't had sex with them, but I've met hundreds of women over the course of my life. And one thing that I've noticed about women is women often believe that they're powerful when you meet them. They believe that they are so well put together and they're, they're high in their intelligence. But say when you meet a woman, you got to teach them how to talk, how to communicate, how to voice their pain, their, their, their emotions, how to articulate their weakness. You got you to gotta, you gotta train them how to talk. You got to train them how to communicate. They don't know how to communicate. Then you can't really get, you can't get with no old, old woman because then... You, they can't do nothing. They can't do nothing. They can't do nothing. <laughs> so what you gonna do? You got you gotta you gotta train somebody. 
You don't want to break no legs and end up in the hospital and stuff like that. <laughs> break, break no tonsils and stuff. So at the end of the day, you have to. Uh, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> walking, walking around with neck breaks and stuff. Walking around with a neck brace and stuff. Me going on and stuff like that. So you gotta train somebody that's of a young age. Because saints, the thing about it, no woman actually is trained how to be a woman of God. She may be trained to work, be independent, be strong for herself. They learn all that stuff, but they don't learn how to be woman of God. Women are not trained to be woman of God. That's why when the king comes into your life, the king is fighting to get you to be focused. The king is fighting for you to be pure. The king is fighting for you to be holy. For you not to be lustful. For you not to fornicate. The king is fighting for you to stop eating people and stuff. to the kingdom that is made for yourself. Everybody has a kingdom made for them. And in your kingdom is your wardrobe, your, your transportation, your clothing, your housing, your food. Everything is in your kingdom. Everybody has, no, 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 there's the kingdom of heaven. But in the kingdom of heaven, he gives you a kingdom of your own. When you live in your city becomes your kingdom. And everything that you want is in your kingdom. Esther, she is respecting his kingdom, his kingship, 
she receives her kingdom. Esther had a kingdom within the king's kingdom. That's why she got maids underneath her. That's why Vashti mishandled her kingdom. She let the people underneath her see her rebelling against the king that gave her the kingdom. So saints, this is what goes on when God gives you a king, he's giving you somebody that if you worship them, you have to worship your king. You can't just say, okay, um, I respect them as a man. No, no, you can't do that bull when you come to a king. You can't do that. I respect them as a man of God. You know, I know that God used them. That ain't going to help you. Because if you believe that God used them, you believe that Satan could use them too. That's the revelation that people have. When you up there be talking about, I know that God used them. The same way the familiar spirit's going to tell you when they're being used by Satan. You know, Satan using them right now. Yeah, because you, you that's your idea. You got a philosophy of usage. Your king is not in the aspect of Oh, oh, you know, I know that God used them. God is right there showing up to you, talking to you, looking at you, rebuking you, training you, encouraging you, teaching you, mentoring you right there. You got to worship the king. 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 Look at 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 20. And David said to all of the congregation, now bless the Lord your God and all the congregation. Bless the Lord God of their fathers. And they bowed down their heads and they worship the Lord, and they worship the king. Saints, this, this real. This real. God will pick people to worship the king. And when they say they're not going to worship the king, God will pick somebody else to worship the king. And everybody that's called to worship be going further than the last. Because it's new wine. It's drunk love. It's drunk worship. And see, the latter always gets more intoxicated in worship than the former. You have to receive grace to worship the king. See, saints, I'm going I'm to tell you something so funny. You know, like people, they'll fight, they'll fight stuff, right? They'll fight a teacher like this. But it, re it really reveals that they don't even have much depth in the word. Because even the Bible said, believe the, believe the Lord God. Then it goes nextly and say, believe the prophet. Wait, wait, believe. You told me to do it to God. Then you said, believe the prophet. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So, so you're telling me to do the same thing that I do to God, to the prophet. Which means that the prophet is in the God class. A person. If the prophet be in the man class, then you won't have to treat them with the same quality that you're treating God. You're treating God with the quality of belief. Well, you're treating the prophet with the same quality of belief. So what is the mystery of this prophet then? Because you're telling me when I believe God, I have to worship God to believe him. Well, for me to believe the prophet, I have to worship the prophet to believe the prophet. 
So saints, you have to receive a grace for worship. If you don't receive the grace for worship, you won't be able to make it with your prophet, your king. And when you receive a grace to worship, all of your pride goes. Worship is the most unselfish state of seeking God. You know you can pray and still be selfish. Shoot, you can even fast and still be selfish. Ain't that shocking? You can fast and still be selfish. But worship is the most unselfish state of seeking God. If you take a note, write that down. When somebody received the grace for worship, arguments die. You'll never argue with somebody that you worship. You will never hate somebody that you worship. You will never even criticize somebody you worship. You will never be jealous of somebody you worship. You have to receive the grace of worship if you are going to succeed with the king that God gives to you, you have to worship them. And they make it easy for you because kings, a king that's sent to you is an awesome communicator. They communicate things easy for you to understand. You know, sometimes people be like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. No, the king will tell you. If you follow me, you know that I don't eat peanuts. <laughs> you know I don't eat almonds, not figuratively or in real life. You know. You ain't got to wonder, it's all obvious. It's all understandable. Um, say you was to spend a day with me. Let me give you, because uh, um, most likely, you may get to spend a day with me. Let me just give you some, let me just give you some understanding. So say you're spending a day with me, all right? Let me show you something. If I say glory to God, don't be silent. Don't. If I say glory to God, say glory to God. If I say hallelujah, say hallelujah. In heaven, let me, let me, let me reveal something to you. In heaven, if somebody says, praise the Lord, somebody all the way down the street, all the way in another village will say, praise the Lord. And somebody will hear them and say, praise the Lord. The other person says, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And then all of a sudden, they break out in an uproar, praise the Lord. That's how heaven operates. Everybody is in unity. If somebody say, oh, glory to God. Somebody say, glory to God. 
Somebody say, glory to God. Somebody say, glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody look back while they're walking on their journey. Glory to God. Somebody look back and say, glory to God. Glory to God. Everybody in the pool. Glory to God. 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 You hear glory to God echoing all throughout heaven. That's unity of spirit. If you spend time with me and I say glory to God, don't be quiet. If I say glory to God, say glory to God. If I say hallelujah, say hallelujah. Unless you're dead. Because the Bible said the dead don't praise God. I'm giving you some keys. If I ask you a question, don't tell me yes. You're not retarded. Say yes and address by the title that you see the person. That's why some of you all do better in a natural courtroom than a heavenly courtroom. You be inside the courtroom, you about to get life in prison. Yes, your honor. Yes, your honor. Yes, your honor. Yes, your honor. You talk to God. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Use your mouth for something good. How many of y'all recognize times in your life where you use your mouth for something bad? All right. Use your mouth for something good. Speak up. Talk. Don't, 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 don't get into favor with God and you lesser than the same way. There'll be people you don't even understand the pleasure well that you have in conversation that God wants to see out of you and you don't use it. Why? Why don't you use it? Why rob God? Why, why are you going to take your mouth and not give him the supply that he wants out of the mouth? That's why, you, did you know why your mouth is still here today? Why you still got your lips today? I'm talking about these. Uh, why you still got those lips up there today? Huh? So God gave you them lips for you to use them lips to speak life. You have a lifeline in your lips. So, you spend time with me, I ask you a question, no. I'm going to think you're stupid. You say yes, I'm going to think you're stupid. Address the king how you see the king. If you see them as nobody, say yes. If you see them as nobody, say no. The same way, if some of you all was about to go see that decapitated man, y'all would dress up. I ain't even gonna call his name the decapitated man. <laughs> I ain't even gonna call his name the decapitated man, Ahab. If you was about to go see Ahab, and y'all was about to, to have Dairy Queen together, you would dress up. Oh, I'm about to dress up. I got invited to have some Dairy Queen. So if you see me, don't dress down. If you see me, don't dress down. I'm giving you some keys. If you see me, don't dress down. Number three. I'm giving you some keys. We spend time together. Smell nice. But don't damp yourself too much. Because <laughs> you don't want to drown yourself with the scent. That pick moderation. 
Don't, don't, don't put too, don't put too much on. And then you up there sneezing. Hachi, hachi. People be sneezing like cats and dogs. It sound like it sound like the fire hose about to come off in the yard. Don't don't wear so much that it aggravates your sinuses. What else? Don't have low energy. Don't have low energy. Your energy should never be low. If your energy gets low around us, we don't want to be around you no more. If your energy gets low, there's no reason to invest time in you. Here's another thing. Are you healed? What are you not healed from? Then you're not going to be able to enjoy the king to the fullest. If you are unable to drink water because you almost drowned when you were six years old. So now you got to fear water. I don't drink water. Because you're not healed, we can't enjoy you. We can't buy you water. We drink your water. We can't give you water because you're not healed. Something has traumatized you to affect you. Now we can't give you water because you up there talking about I was drowned. I don't want no water. Are you healed? If you're not healed, there's nothing we could really do in unification with you. Because you more stuck on your wounds and your trauma. And we flowing from a place of healing and freedom. And when we offer you the healing and freedom, you're like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm going to stick to my wounds in my prison. And then imagine when you stick to your prison when the one that got the keys to prison is talking to you, you're telling them, no, I'd rather stay here. I'd rather stay in the gates of hell. So what's the purpose of spending time with you if you ain't going to get free? Huh? What's the purpose of spending time with you if you ain't going to get free? What's the purpose? Why are we wasting our time with you and you're not getting free? We could spend time with somebody else that will get free. You spending time with the king? Don't speak stupid words. Don't say dumb stuff. If we finish teaching and we just gave revelation upon revelation, don't walk up to us and say, did you just hear about it? Oprah in the hospital. Did you ever see me meet Oprah? No. Did you ever see me hug Oprah, kiss Oprah? All right. Have you ever seen me cook for Oprah, Oprah cook for me? All right. So in my concern levels, 
my concern is not going to be there. My concern is where I just spoke about. So my concern is, did you catch what I just spoke about? Since I remember there was a time in my life. I had a team of people. I would ask them, what did they learn? They go lean over to notes. They go try to find stuff. Let me find. Okay, let me let me rewatch again. How did I fire all of them? Fired all of them. If you go to a house and they don't receive you, dust your feet off and don't give them peace in that house. It's talking about wholeness. If I can't make you whole, bye. Because somebody's going to be made whole. I have the power to do it, but if I can't make you whole, I'm not going to stay to try to make you whole. The law of discipleship was if you go to that house and they don't want to be whole, keep it moving. Some of you all are getting hurt in certain seasons of your life because you stay reaching for people that don't want to be reached for. They don't want to be reached for. They don't want you. So move on. One of the greatest gifts that you'll give to yourself is where you no longer want to be. At the place where you continuously was revealed, you're not wanted. One of the greatest gifts you'll give to yourself is when you leave somebody. And says, I'm going to tell you something real scary. Oftentimes you cling to people because you think that you're being healed, staying connected. You don't know that the more you stay with them, you're becoming more wounded and more wounded and more wounded. Your real healing is away from them, not with them. Some of y'all about to quit your job right now. I ain't talking about that, baby. This wisdom right here, I'm talking about your personal life. When you're making money, you benefiting yourself. There's some people that you know right now ain't making you no money. Huh? Huh? There's some people right now that they ain't got nothing to do with that aspect of your life. You at a job. You, you can't look for friends at a job. You can't look for no catering at no job. You can't look for nobody kissing your behind at no job. You there to kiss some behind. You there to learn humility. I ain't talking about that. See, some of y'all going to swap wisdoms and start talking about, oh, I'm about to leave my job because they don't want me here. Baby, your job is supposed to be a war zone. Because this is where you die to yourself. This is where you learn to kill your emotional warfare. This is where you learn to lay down your ego. This is where you learn how to fight the devil in real time. <laughs> you learn how to operate in the wisdom of a serpent in real time. Oftentimes when I deal with stuff like that, is a relationship with a mother and a child. It's a relationship with a child and a mother. It's a relationship with a man and a woman. It's a relationship with uh, with uh, opposite sex. That's what I'm dealing with. We deal with the business section. Uh, you could be trampled underfoot by somebody. 
God will reward you. We've all been trampled underfoot by somebody. We have all worked for somebody. I've worked for somebody that disrespected me. I worked for a racist before. I remember one time working for a white woman that called me black. Huh? Was there not super duper? Was there not a place of arrangement? Was there not a place of offense? Yes, but I didn't receive that place. I received that paycheck. That's what <laughs> I received that paycheck. I received that paycheck. That's what I received. I received that promotion. That's what I received. Did I receive that place of offense? No. Did I receive that place of fire back? No. Did I receive that place of bitterness? No. Could that person in hell right now, if I saw him in hell, I'll slap him two times, but I'll forgive him. They're in hell. They're dead. They're in hell. They wasn't in hell when they called me black, though. They wasn't in hell when they operated in racism towards me. But I bet, I bet you I served them. I bet you I did what they asked. Because that pleased the Father that his will was more important than their kill. His will is more important than their kill. They came to kill me. His will is more important than their kill. They, there's people that come, that they come and Satan uses them to magnify so that you'll take your eyes off of the Lord that sent you to them. So that you can look at Satan. And saints, do you know what happens when you look at Satan? You leave the will of God. What happens when you look at Satan? You have no energy to serve. What happens when you look at Satan? You make the wrong reaction. You choose the wrong path. When you look at Satan, see, oftentimes you hear about when you look at Jesus, but what happens when you look at Satan? You get mad at the wrong person. You fight the wrong person. You talk wrong words to the wrong person. Saints, it's very important. The kingly anointed. The kingly anointed. The kingly anointed. This is this really important. The kingly anointing. When God gives you a king, you got a chance right there to please, to worship, to do things that you always been saying that you're about. You say that you this and that. You say you love God since you was young. You fear God. Ain't nobody do you like Jesus. You love him with all your heart. And the kingly anointing will come and test you. I've had people over the years, they volunteer. They volunteer, I wish I worked for you, prophet. I wish I could work for you. And people, why would I want you to work for me? Why? Huh? Why would I want you to work for me? I can't even get you to work for me from a distance. I can't even get you to, 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 to work for me in another city. I can't get you to work for me while you're around people. I can't get you to work for me when you're being tempted. And then you want me to bring your clothes for you to work for me. It's all in your head, Cletus. By the way, that's why I don't hire people. Because I don't want to go to jail for murder. <laughs> Jail for murder. I don't want to gain. I don't want to go to jail for murder.
I don't want to go to jail. Look what I wrote down here. I want you to catch this. It's a whole revelation. I want you to hear this. Look at this here. It says, when a king is in your life, you must worship that king to access the destiny of your finances and your future. No. Worship means you follow their systems. King the Anointed, page 25. Worship means you follow their systems, their rules and expectations. The law of worship is to invest all of your energy, learning, and servanthood to someone in authority over you. Look, the law of worship is to invest all of your energy, your learning, and your servanthood to someone in authority over you. Look, I'm going to say this again. The law of worship is to invest all of your energy, your learning, and servanthood to someone in authority over you. Children must worship their parents to avoid discipline or chastening. Drivers must worship the speed limit to avoid tickets. Restaurants and chefs must worship cleanliness and sanitation to avoid being banned from cooking food for people in a public setting. I'm showing you how worship is all around us. Students must worship their teacher and principal to escape the consequence of suspension or flunking a grade level. So everybody here worship, they act like, no, 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 no. Nobody's supposed to be worshiped. But you watch how people act when they're not worshiped. Everybody demands worship somewhere. Even if you're living in an apartment, you demand worship that nobody come knock on your door at 3 a.m. You can't knock on my door. Why I can't knock on your door at 3 a.m.? Why, why can't I knock at your door? Oh, because you want to be worshipped. If you didn't want to be worshipped, I could knock at your door at 3 a.m. But because you want to be worshipped, you're giving me your rules. Can I run inside of your apartment when I want? Can I just come, you open up your door, just run inside and I start using the shower, I start watching TV on your couch. Can I do that? Why? Because you want to be worshipped. If nobody wanted to be worshipped, you would never lock your door. If nobody never wanted to be worshipped, you would never ever order the food that you want at a restaurant. But everybody wants some angle of worship. Look at this. The law of worship is everywhere, literally. Look what I wrote. In the law, even gangs and criminals use the law of worship to accomplish gang activity and violence. They use the law of worship. Even gangsters worship the gang leader. A wife must worship her husband to submit. A husband must worship his wife to treat her with love. Look, 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 look. A wife must worship her husband to submit. A husband must worship his wife to treat her with love. Look, so saints, Even a husband has to worship in his part because to love you, he has to worship you. So says, what is divorce? It is the failure to worship.
Worship creates peace in relationships. This is what I wrote. These are wisdom doors. Worship is the wisdom to be endorsed by others. Worship is the wisdom to be endorsed by others. So when you worship, you create a platform for other people to endorse you. People endorse you because you are a good worshiper. This is what I wrote. People endorse you because you are a good worshiper. People like you because of your worshiping quality that solves a problem for them. Listen, people like you because of your worshiping quality. That's why people like you, because you're worshiping. Doesn't mean you're worshiping God, but you're worshiping. Worship, listen to what I wrote here. Worship is a divine trait that makes you supply a joyful presence to someone's atmosphere. Did you catch that? Worship is a divine trait, page 27. Worship is a divine trait that makes you supply a joyful presence to someone's atmosphere. A divine king is an encounter. So, so say, let me, before I go there. You notice this right here? I'm telling you, you got to be joyful. Worship is a divine trait that makes you supply a joyful presence to someone's atmosphere. So you can't say that you're, you're, you're worshiping God and you're not joyful. So now you know, whenever you're not joyful, you're not in worship. Ah, ah. Just remember when you're not happy, you're not in worship. Oh, I'm worshiping God in this season of my life, but I'm pressing. Uh -uh, you know, it's real hard for me. I'm struggling. I'm going through some stuff, but I'm worshiping God. No, no, no. Worship is a joyful atmosphere, a joyful presence that you place in, in someone's atmosphere. My goodness. So as you can see, worship is joy coming out of you. A divine king is an encounter with the great God, Jehovah. The spirit of the living God lives in the body of the king. So watch this here. God trains you through the body of your king. Look, look, look. I talked about the scripture was a raw anointing when they worshiped the king. They worshiped the king was a raw anointing. And it, I said here that the worship was led by God. Notice God did not rebuke them for worshiping the king. The spirit of the Lord did not strike them or issue plagues as a consequence of his wrath. So God is not offended because this is God appearing to you. He's using the same flesh that you're familiar with. He's using the same format that you're, you wash your flesh every day, hopefully. Some of y'all need to do three, four, five times. If your body been through some stuff. You done met Kelly Juniors and Kelsey Juniors and stuff. Oh, three, four, five times worship. Some stains. And some of y'all don't act like you, you up there all super clean and stuff like that. You ain't got to take no shower now, man. You got the past, you got history, you need to shower, shower it down. Holes, fire holes, all that. Fire holes, sprinklers. <laughs> you need, sometimes you need sprinklers out. Sometimes you need fire holes, you got to turn around. You got to, you got to, you got to. All of them lift them up. Sometimes you gotta lift them up because they've been through some things too. 
you got to lift them up. I'm talking about depending on who you are. Sometimes you got to lift them up. You got to lift them up. You got to, you got to, you got to lift them up. Toes. You got to spread, spread. You got to spread something. Truth is the truth. You gotta spread it. Gotta spread it um, don't be trying to it. It's not. It's not necessary. No, it's necessary for you. For you. <laughs> for you, my friend. For you, my friend. For you, my friend. You. For you, my friend. Go, go deep, deep within. Dig deep. Discover. Discover the channel. Now look, it was and is the Lord's will. God intended for them to discern and then demonstrate worship towards the king he placed in their life. The people were wise and understanding. Satan did not have power to veil their hearts with blindness and dishonor. I'm going to say this one more time. The people were wise and understanding and Satan did not have power to veil their hearts with blindness and dishonor. There was a unity and everyone was on the same page to bring exuding happiness to their king's heart. Everyone had passion to see their king please. They were energetic to impress him. The people of God worshiped the king and bowed their heads in respect to him and the father in heaven. For them to bow their heads, look at this here, this is so profound. For them to bow their heads, it was a sign of allowing the king, allowing the king to have their heads for the sake of teaching them, molding them, and shaping them. This is so profound. Are you catching this? I want you to catch this. Saints, this is amazing. Are you catching this? Look, 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 look. For them to bow their heads, it was a sign of allowing the king to have their heads for the sake of teaching them, molding them, shaping them. Look at the next text. The king could transfer his knowledge and dominate their heads with the wisdom of God via their permission. Your king on earth represents your king in heaven. Jesus in disguise. The Holy Spirit has hidden the tests of life inside of your king. Look at this. Look at this. The king's access, page 30, is constant, is a constant test. The king's access and favor is a constant test. It will be a test as long as you live. Never let your respect for the gift of access cease. The people had the revelation that God's full power and glory was being carried by their king on earth. They respected the anointing and the office of their king. They celebrated his highness and greatness. They acknowledged that the Lord had made his home in the king. These people responded to the truth that the creator of the universe was living out his will and plan through their king's body on earth the earth. The move of God was so intense in the days of David and Solomon because they worshiped their king. They knew that these men were gods and chose to imitate God to lead the people into righteousness, purity, and perfection. Look what it says right here. When the people rallied around their kings with worship, the glory of God fell. 
the glory of God fell. The fire of God and the favor of God would fill the people's lives when their eyes were open to worship their king. The honor that was flowing out of them intensified the move of God, even in their nation and their finances. Look at, look at uh, page 32 here. Look at chapter three, mouth ministry. Look at, look at this. Look what it says. Your responses to your king matters greatly. Kings weigh your words. So we don't hear what you say. We hear what you're saying. We don't hear what you say. We hear what you're saying. Okay, I got it. So you just said, leave me alone. I don't want to talk about it no more. I don't want to keep hearing this. I don't want to be rebuked. I don't want to be corrected. I don't want to feel like I missed it. I don't want to feel sad that I missed the mark. I don't want to feel condemned. I don't want to feel like I, I did something wrong. Let's move on to the next moment. That's, that's what you're saying. Well, what you say is, okay, I got it. Kings don't hear what you say. They hear what you're saying. Because they're prophets. So they listen to the heart over the mouth. What you say matters as much as how you say it. What you say matters as much as how you say it. What you say matters as much as how you say it. What you say matters as much as how you say it. So look, when you say something, you may be saying something, but how are you saying it? What's, 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 what is the attitude that you're saying it out of? What, what is your motive? What's your intention? Your tone of voice is magnified to the king. Your tone of voice is magnified. It is, is not magnified to you, but is magnified to the king. Demolish the options to be sarcastic, sarcastic and smart with your mouth. Demolish the options to be sarcastic and smart with your mouth. The fruits of the spirit should be exercised by your tongue and choice of words. Your honor should be heard. It should be heard. It should be audible. It should be loud. The value of your honor should be loud. Your submission should be heard. The king should never have to question, are they submitted to me? Are they against me? Are they with me? Are they flowing with me? If your king got to investigate whether or not you're flowing with them, it's because you're not. If your king asks you a question on why you stop doing something, it's because you're not flowing with them. It means that the favor is going past you. The miracles are going past you. Your voice is a revelation of your soul. Your voice is a revelation of your soul. So your voice reveals your soul. Your voice, not even just your words, your voice, your tone of voice. How does your voice sound? Since you know when somebody real sick, uh, I'm okay. You know, I haven't been feeling too good lately. That's their voice. Their voice is revealing sickness. Their voice is revealing that they're fragile. Your voice is a revelation of your soul. There is an anointing for your tone to be gracious and soft. There is an anointing for your tone to be gracious and soft. So if you don't receive that anointing, it's just because you didn't receive the anointing. Look what it says right here. You must intentionally guide your tongue to be pleasant to your king. You must intentionally guide your tongue to be pleasant to your king. Seek softness and not war. Use your words to please the king. And then I give you examples. Agreement is the pleasure 
of words. You ask somebody, has your water sprinklers, you, the water sprinklers just hit me in the face. The water sprinklers ever hit you in the face? No, no, I never hit me in the face. No, I don't know what you're talking about. Agreement is the pleasure of words. Agreement is the pleasure of words. I'm adding this. Disagreement is the sorrow of conversation. I just added that. That's not in the book. Disagreement is the sorrow of conversation. You ever notice that when disagreement happens in a conversation, how sorrowful it becomes? Disagreement is the invasion of bitter words. Wow. This is not in the book. This is just in me right now. It's just inside of me right now. Disagreement is the invasion of bitter words. That is bitter. It's bitter. Now, now your experience is a bitter experience. Agreement is the pleasure of words. Submission is the pleasure of words. Praise is the pleasure of words. It's amazing. If a king got to get you to praise them, the king is wasting their time with you. There's other people that will praise them. If the king got to keep on activating you to praise them, don't worry, there's other people, there's other sons, there's other daughters. Don't worry. If the king got to keep on saying, you know, I, 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 don't worry, there's other praises. But praise is the pleasure of words. So how can my king enjoy me with my words? How are you praising them? The Bible says, let another man praise you in Proverbs. Look, praise is the pleasure of words. Compliments is the pleasure of words. Compliments, compliments, compliments is the pleasure of words. How do I please my king? Compliments is the pleasure of words. Volunteering is amazing. It's amazing. I, I, I can write something and then I still, I still will have to train in this same dimension. And I've been saying this. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes I'm repeating myself to the fool, but I'm giving revelation to the wise. I speak further to the wise. I speak backwards to the fool. I speak backwards when you're slow. I speak forward when you're fast. Look, volunteering is the pleasure of work. Volunteering is the pleasure of words. Volunteering. Look at this. An apology is the pleasure of words. An apology. An apology. Apologizing. Don't do something wrong. Don't mess up the king's schedule. Mess up the king's plan. Mess up the king's thoughts. Mess up the king's atmosphere. And don't apologize. You don't just try to rush back in. Oh, oh, I'm going to act like I didn't just sin against the king and what the king told me. And then you just pop back in. No, apologize. Apologize. Don't go connect with the king's enemy and then you just wipe your mouth off. I didn't just connect with the king's enemies. Hey, king, I love you. No, apologize. An apology is the pleasure of words. See, see, you see how clear a king communicates? It's not even hard, right? You don't got to assume or nothing. It's just easy to understand. Problem solving is the pleasure of words. 
So when you want to solve a problem for the king, that's the pleasure of words. He's, he's doing something that needs your help. That's the pleasure of words. Look, the anointing of softness creates peace for the king. So you want to create peace for your king? Be soft. Kings become very agitated by the disrespectful speaker. Don't ask the king a question and then when we give you the answer, you're upset because the answer is exposing how dumb thou art. Your dumbness need to be spoken if you want the truth. Don't ask, well, well, why did the rain hit me when I was outside? What did I do wrong? And then the king tells you, you didn't bring an umbrella. Oh! How dare you? How dare you tell me I should have brought an umbrella? That's not the reason why the water hit me. How dare you tell me it was the umbrella I didn't bring? Foolish words wounds a king's soul. Foolish, <laughs> foolish words wounds a king's soul. <laughs> foolish, <laughs> foolish words, <laughs> they wound a king's soul. So, so remember this. You know how you get wounded uh, uh, by different things? Foolish words wounds a king's soul. That's how a king get wounded. He gets wounded when he hears you say something foolish because it goes against the investment he has given you. So you're showing him, I'm wasting your time. What you have given to me, I don't use it. And it hurts the king. So saints, I'm giving you some powerful, I'm giving you some powerful things right here. I'm giving you some powerful things right here. I'm showing you, I'm showing you a mighty anointing in this. I'm showing you something amazing. I'm showing you a secret path. His soul is God's wisdom storage house. Look what it says right here. His soul is is God's wisdom storage house. Wisdom is a prophetic anointing in your king for him to discern what spirit is influencing your ways. Oh, you didn't hear me. Oh, I'm gonna read this one more time. Wisdom is a prophetic anointing in your king for him to discern what spirit is influencing your ways. Wow. Wait a minute. So the king knows what spirit is using you when you don't know what spirit is using. They know. You might be talking, you might just be in your mind like, no, nah, 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 I'm, just, I'm just speaking my peace, but they know what spirit is using. They know the spirit that's talking out of you when you talk. They're looking at that. You might say something that might sound beautiful to you. It might sound wonderful, but they're looking at your spirit. Saints, if I was to tell you some of the stuff, you would you, you be. Section tell you, you're so beautiful. Tell Jethro to shut up. Tell Jethro. <laughs> Jethro. <laughs> tell Jethro to shut up. Kings easily <laughs> detect, 
Kings easily detect sarcasm and darkness in your words, your phrases, and your terms. Did you hear that? They easily, it's not hard for them. They can detect sarcasm, darkness, They can detect it in your words. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? They can hear it in your words easily. It don't take them long. It's a quick detection system. They know if it's you being sarcastic. And saints, I want to say this because this is real shocking. Kings, I'm going to add this on. Kings know if you have a spirit of divination in you. You know, you know, you know what that is? A spirit of divination means that you praise us with your mouth, but you're not really none of us. You're not connected with us. You're not, you're not, you're not really flowing with us. They know if you have a spirit of divination. They know. When you have a spirit of divination, remember the girl was saying, thou servant of God, she was, words of praise now, words of praise. But it's a lie. You're lying. And then also, this is just me freestyling. I'm not doing off of this. But remember this. Don't become robotic with divine information. So, you know, the king start teaching you about stuff and then now, Oh, oh, I want to tell you, King, I, I, I just completely love your outfit. King, I just want to tell you that I just want to let me hold you down, down, the down, 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 down. I just want to tell you that I enjoy the teaching, King, for all that you have done for me. Don't become a robot. It's not enjoyable. It's the same way. You want to get a blow up doll and the blow up doll, nah. The blow up doll getting choked, and, nah, nah. So same way. Don't be robotic. You see what I'm saying? Don't be robotic. Now look at this here. Let's go further. It says your king is a prophet that reads your body language. Your king is a prophet that reads your body language. Your king is an expert on your facial expression. So your king can read your face. Your king can read your countenance, your heart, your inward man. Can read your body language. It says seek to be innocent, blameless and commendable in the king's presence. Look what it says. The king has power to promote you and reward you with eternal favor by your wise ways. Kings listen for the sounds of sarcasm, jealousy, dishonor, reproach, or contrariness. Let me say something else. I had all my sons together. I had no problems. Are you hearing me? I had all my sons together. I had no problems. I didn't have none of my sons going to each other and saying stuff that I didn't want them to say for the most part. But if I had females, if I brought my daughters together, it'll be a mess. I brought my sons together. I put, put them in different sex, but they all together. They're all together, all, everybody on one accord. But I, I couldn't do that with, with women. Women are too evil. It's a sad thing. Women are too jealous of each other. Women are too in competition. Women have different mindset. Women, their focus are different. But I put, I put all the men together. Peacefulness. No rebuking, no, no anger, no upset, no madness, no why did you say that? Why are you, why are you talking about that? Just easy. Easy. I 
pit, if I was to pit all the daughters together, somebody gonna say something stupid. Somebody gonna say, oh, are you in that group? Huh? Can't say nothing. Can't say nothing. Can't say nothing. Can't say nothing. You get around men, it's good. You get around women, it's just some son stupid gonna proceed out. Since why you think the word of God say husbands don't be bitter at your wife, because it's stupidity bound up in a woman. Stupidity bound up in a woman. Huh? Don't worry. I got something for you. This conference we about to do, I got something for you. We got K... <laughs> we got K-9 dogs for you, baby. Pop out. I dare you pop out. Them K-9s going to bite your ankles. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. We got them canine dogs. Every time you bust out, say something stupid, they're gonna bite your ankles. That's all they know. Don't worry, no, 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 no. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't mad at you. Go say something crazy. Watch them canines just pop out. I got it. Bite your ankles. <laughs> them canine dogs bite your ankles. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. There is a grace. There is a grace. There is a grace. There's a grace. I'm joking around, by the way. I'm joking around about the canines. I ain't got no, I ain't gonna have no canine dogs there, hopefully. Uh, but there is a grace of worship, and you gotta receive it so that you can go from glory to glory and accomplish why the king is in your life and stop being a whore. To the kingly anointing. Stop being a whore. Leave the generations of whores. Everybody has to choose to cut ties with the generation of whores. The generation where you everywhere attempting to get attention attempting to get people to praise you, recognize you. And even you, when, when you have a spirit of whoredom, if you feel like you're not being paid attention to, you hop over. Okay, then. Okay, this is my king, right? But he's not paying attention to me, so I'm going to go over here. The spirit of whoredom will always justify itself of why it's a whore. But the spirit of whoredom, it comes from within, not without. So when you got a spirit of whoredoms, it, it is dealing with you from the inside out, not the outside in. In your mind, you could be like, nah. You know, I, I have this whoredom because I ain't being paid attention to. I have this whoredom because nobody recognizes me. No, no, you have the whoredom because you're a whore. And the whole reason why the king is in your life is so that you can come out of the generation of whoredoms. So that you could break the Gomar anointing. For you to destroy the altar and be set free. That's why the king comes into your life. So be set free. So that you can live this beautiful life. So that you can receive everything that God has for you. Cars, houses, lands, promotions, jobs, favors, increase, divine connections, encounters, angels. Receive all those things by destroying the generation of whoredoms. The altar of whoredoms. Since this 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 um 
this kingly anointing, it really gives you an evaluation of yourself because you can see for yourself. Okay, I've never been dedicated to nothing from God. You can say that you've been dedicated from stuff from Satan, of course, because people have bad habits for years. That means you're dedicated to the habit. You have bad decision-making for years. That means you're dedicated to toxicity, wrong people, wrong pathways. But when in your life have you been dedicated to God's will? Okay, you was in a path. You say that that was God's will, but you wasn't free. Then God comes to you. God sets you free. Are you dedicated to where God sets you free? The kingly anointing lets you evaluate and let you see for yourself. Also, I want to say this lastly. I was talking about if you spend a day with me. You spend a day with me. If you have a seed to sow, sow the seed. Don't wait until you say, well, well, this is inappropriate for me to give him the seed now. No, no, no. Sow the seed while you're with me, while you're in my presence. It's sow the seed while you're with me. If I tell you, uh, 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 sow the seed while you're with me. Don't wait until, you, you see how my sons do? You see how my sons do? You see how my sons do? We could be teaching. They'll give me the seed then. Don't hold the seed and say, I'm going to sow because it's inappropriate right now for me to give him the seed. So honor became inappropriate to you, but dishonor not. Dishonor is inappropriate. Honor is appropriate. Operate in honor. Do it. Find something to bring the king joy. If it's not money, just being happy just being joyful, just being a, 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 a complimentary presence to the atmosphere, always being nice, always being ready, always volunteering, always serving, always looking for what the king needs help with. That's, that's, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. And by these things, one will go from favor to favor. 